Hello and welcome, Mehdi here back with another video for you in uh, R085 creating a film festival poster series. Uh, we're going to create this particular poster today, which is a sketch by Fionn. Thanks uh, for letting me use it. I think it's a lovely sketch and uh, it took a while to recreate it. There's a lot of techniques that... Uh, I will be discussing to recreate this. I thought it wouldn't take as much as long as it did. However, just to give you an idea of what you are aiming to achieve, is uh, this is the end result. Uh, I think I managed to keep it as close as, uh, to the original design by uh, Fionn, but uh, you be the judge of that. Uh, I think it looks okay. Uh, again, I could uh, think of a few things I would do differently, but... Uh, there's a lot of technique that uh, I use to put this together. So I'm going to discuss that uh, in detail. Uh, apologies if it's going to be another, yet another long uh, tutorial. I'm going to try to keep it as uh, short as possible. It's a lot to cover, so I hope you enjoy it. And let's get started. Right, the first thing that we need to do, we need to go to File, New, and we want to choose A3 Portrait. In my case, it's Portrait. I'm choosing it from international paper, click OK. Right, now we need to find our sketch. So I'm going to go File, Open, find the sketch that I'm going to use, find the scan, double click, open it up. Now we have uh, two files open correctly, our original canvas and our scan. I'm going to copy it from the scan, Control A to select everything. So I'm going to hit Control A, select it, copy it, go back to our document, I'm going to... Uh, hit Control L. It will copy it to your original canvas. Use the deform tool, the second option on your toolbar. You can zoom out, uh, put it in place, hold Shift and scale it up. Let go, it will uh, resize it. You can use the shape tool to come out of the, the deform tool. We can name our layer ref underscore image and our first step is done. Right, done the scan. Right, now we want to start with uh, the jigsaw. I'm going to start with the jigsaw. I'm going to go File, Open. I am going to find our uh, jigsaw. I just want to extract the background first, uh, or ex extract the jigsaw from the background. The first thing you want to do, you want to double click on the background layer, click OK. Double, remove it as a background layer. Then you want to use the magic wand tool, hold shift and add to your selection. So I clicked once, hold shift again, select the inside. I'm just going to hit delete and I'm going to delete our white background. Now that's done, I'm going to hold uh, control A, select everything, control C to copy it. Go back to our uh, original uh, canvas. Hit Control L, it will copy it as a new layer. I'm just going to name it quickly. I'm going to say uh, Jigsaw, done. I reduce the opacity by 40%, uh, so 60, so we can see what we're doing. Go to the Deform tool. I'm going to try to place it there as well as I can. That roughly matches our sketch. Once I'm happy, I can increase it back to 100%. Right. So far, so good. Uh, the next thing we want to do, we want to add some uh, blood spatter uh, across the across the jigsaw. So I'm going to go and find a couple of images uh, for uh, the blood spatter. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I did find uh, quite a few... Uh, blood spatter images. So I'm going to hold control and I'm going to select all of them in file open window. So hold control, uh, select all four, click open. I'm going to start. For, um, oh, that's not a good image. So we cannot use that. That one is okay. That one is okay. Right, I'm going to ignore this one. It looks like ketchup anyway. So, <laughs> going to right click, close. I'm going to start with this one. This one looks okay. 
I think the color could be a lot darker. So control A, copy. Uh, and control A to select it, copy it, control C, control L to put in our original canvas. I'm gonna use the deform tool to put it in place. And let's have a look. Don't worry about it too much. For now, you just want to uh, position it uh, as well as you can. And we want to start layering it over uh, over each other. Uh, now that's done, uh, I'm gonna adjust the the levels. I think uh, it does look like too much of a catch up rather than uh, blood. So I'm gonna go to image, adjust levels, and I'm gonna adjust the mid tones to make it a bit darker. The high tones. No, I'm gonna leave the high tones. Let's have a look. Low tones. Yeah, that's okay. Previous, before, after, before, or after, before. I like it. It's much better. So let's click OK. So we done that one. Uh, uh, yeah, let's do this one. So Control A, Control C. I'm going to start to layer a lot of uh, blood images uh, over our jigsaw. And we're going to use different methods to blend these uh, together. Right now, it looks terrible. I appreciate that, that it looks uh, like a mess. But uh, it will look much better once we're done with it. Right. Because this is the one that is dripping, I'm going to try to put it as high as I can. Because I want the, the drip to come obviously as uh, high up as it can. Uh, that one is okay. I'll probably want to adjust the, the first blood spatter based on uh, what we have. I could probably rotate it. Uh, I just want to get a, a better uh, positioning of that image. So far so good. Right. It looks like a mess. Let's try to fix it now. Uh, first, I want to also adjust the the contrast or the levels of uh, this new blood spatter image. So I'm going to go image adjust. Let's try. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Do, do, do. Brightness and contrast. Let's uh, let's try that for a second. All right. I'm going to decrease the brightness. Preview it. Yeah, looks much, much better. Click OK. All right, so far, so good. Now we need to stop masking it. Uh, if you remember, uh, I said if you hold Control and click on the thumbnail of your layer, it will select everything in that layer. Because our selection, our jigsaw was uh, perfectly removed from its background, when you hit uh, hold control and click on the thumbnail, it will select only the jigsaw. Now that we have the selection, all we have to do is just mask it for our uh, for our, both of our blood spatter images. So I'm going to go for layer one first. With the selection still there, I'm going to click the mask tool. Mask the first one. Perfect. The selection is still there. So I'm going to go to layer two and also mask that one. Right, we have a perfect mask for our uh, two uh, blood uh, layers. All we need to do now is uh, we can name our layer and we can do some uh, blending options as well. So I'm gonna double click, uh, I'm gonna say simply blood one, possibly uh, blood two, that's okay. Right, in terms of blending option. Or blend modes you have uh, quite a few different options that you can choose from uh, based on experience I think uh, the one you want to go for is soft light or hard light screen dodge multiply these are the uh, viable options but let's go through most of them anyway multiply it brings the texture from your jigsaw and it will multiply the both layers together with whatever is underneath it, which in our case is the jigsaw. 
Uh, look, I'm gonna try to hide the first one. This looks so much more realistic now. So if you look at the normal blending option, absolutely awful. The contrast is way too high. Uh, it looks fake. We cannot see the textures of the jigsaw, that brush metal texture of, uh, of your circular saw. But if I go now to normal and change it to multiply, you see that texture is not coming through, which is uh, what we want. Looks quite gruesome and quite realistic, which is uh, what we want. Let's do the same thing, but now we're going to do that with multiply as well. Perfect. Now we're layering both of our... Uh, both of our uh, blood spatter together. Uh, I think the the second one is too dark, but actually I don't mind it, even though it went really, really dark when I multiply it, because now it's multiplying not just the jigsaw, it's multiplying this layer and this layer. If this is not the effect that you want, you might want to select both layers, right click, merge selected layer before you apply the mask, and then you do a multiply on those. I like the effect, so I'm going to keep it. The next thing we want to do, we want to add the, the puzzle texture over in our jigsaw element. All right, so let's go file, open. Let's find, uh, we, we want to open two images. So I want to open the jigsaw uh, from uh, Getty Images. I hope there is no watermark on that. I don't think I checked it. Uh, Jigsaw.jpg, open that one as well. So. We have uh, the jigsaw from the, the jigsaw ca character from the Saw movies. Perfect. We have uh, a high resolution image, uh, 1280 by 720, which is not too bad. It's not a huge resolution, but it will do. So I'm going to start with this one first. Uh, control A, Control C, and I'm going to place it over our jigsaw. Control L. Uh, I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to lower the opacity so see my placement as too low. Let's increase it a bit more. Right, what I want to do, I want to, I'm going to mask that circle on the jigsaw. I think the positioning uh, it's okay. Right, so far so good. I'm gonna hide this. I'm gonna turn it back to 100%. Hide it for a second. So turn off the visibility. I'm gonna to try to select that circle, inner circle of our jigsaw. So I'm gonna to go to my selection tool, ellipse selection tool. If I hold control, it will always uh, draw a perfect circle. If I don't hold control, it won't be a perfect circle. I'm going to do the selection and uh, once I've done it, I can uh, move up. I'm j I just want to do it roughly. It happened to be almost a uh, good size. So if I want to expand my selection, if I want to be very picky, I can go select, modify, expand and expand it by a couple of pixels. Click OK. It's almost a perfect selection. Right, now, same thing as always, select your jigsaw layer. We can see how it's gonna mask it, that's fine. Your puzzle layer, rather. Uh, I'm gonna name this anyway, uh, so I don't get confused. Uh, puzzle, done. Uh, I'm gonna hit mask. All right, perfect, Control D to deselect it. I think I should go for screen this time, or soft light, let's do soft light. Uh, not overly keen uh, with the effect, so let's have a look at hard light. Definitely not. <laughs> Screen. <laughs> nope. Multiply. I like this one. Whatever this says, burn. I quite like this. I really like that. Burn. We'll do. Multiply. We'll do. I think burn works really, really well. So. We are layering quite a few effects and it's working really well. Let's add the jigsaw character 
again, if you want to change it to something else, uh, I don't think uh, any of the other ones will work as well. This is not too bad, soft light, hard light, definitely not. And again, the burn one, this is way too light. Darken, no, burn, or multiply. I'm going to leave it at burn. I'm going to go back and change it. Okay, now it's time to add the saw puppet. Uh, so I'm going to go file, open. I did manage to find a better version. I had this version originally. did manage to find the one with the... Either transparent background or white background, which would be much better. I think this version of the puppet that's uh, closer to what was in the film. So control A, control C, copy it. Control L to paste it. I know the resolution of the image is not that high. However, since we're increasing it only ever so slightly, it's not too bad. I am going to make it a semi-transparent for now. Right, trying to... Put them in a position that uh, will make sense to me. Uh, that's fine. Uh, let's uh, increase it to 100%. Deselect it. Going to uh, hold control and click on the thumbnail of the puzzle mask. That will select the entire mask area, which was the inner circle. That we did for uh, for the jigsaw or the puzzle. Now for the puppet one, we do the same thing. So now we extracted the selection from the mask layer of the puzzle. Go to puzzle or layer one, which uh, uh, I'm going to name it puppet. Uh, puppet and add to layer mask. Right. So I think for our blending option, if we put it to screen uh, to get rid of the white background would be a much preferred option. Right, maybe multiply. Right. Much, much better. Multiply works perfectly. I think... Uh, I think I like it quite a bit. Uh, however, I don't like the... The inner piece uh, that is missing. I uh, we got a couple of options. We can either uh, patch it or 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 just mask it. So if I were to mask it, I have to select the the inner circle. Go to the puppet, click on the mask, and everything that is black is going to get masked. So I'm going to choose my foreground color black, go to paint bucket, click it, and that will mask it. So that's one option. However, having said that, I think it would be much better to, to fill the, the hole in your jigsaw. So... I'm going to start deselecting all the layers. I know we've done all of our mask with the hole inside. However, we can fix it. I'm going to try to uh, use uh, the clone tool. Let's do the clone tool. Let's see if it... Uh, uh, let's see if it works. I'm going to select the jigsaw. Uh... Increase the size. Let's do pattern tool first. Oops. The pattern won't work. Let's do the clone tool itself. Gonna hold. Hold Alt, sample it, go back. Click it. That fills it in. The pattern is not similar, however, if I now use the healing brush tool, uh, patch tool, to patch this area. Not 
Much worse. I like that. That's just fine. I think it's done a good enough job for us to to leave it as it is. Let's bring all the layers back. And with all of the detailing there, I don't think you will notice it anyway. We do have one problem. We have all of our mask with that uh, hole in the middle. So we need to go in each layer mask and add those back in. So we need to be in uh, white foreground color. I'm gonna press B for uh, brush. I'm gonna choose the bracket. Doesn't let me change my size for some reason. And I'm just gonna start painting that inner mask area. Uh, I'm gonna use a hard brush. That one is done. Let's add that second one. Third one. And a puppet one. There we go. We've done every single one. Looks much better. We haven't really noticed that uh, area that we fixed. I think it works quite well. In terms of uh, the contrast, could be a bit brighter. Uh, we can mess around with it. If you go to image adjust levels, uh, I can adjust the levels. No, definitely not like a darker. Before. Yeah, after. I think, personally, I think after anyway. Okay, so far, uh, so good. I think uh, it looks uh, looks very good. I'm going to go back and bring up the, the scan. I'm going to start adding our typography in our uh, poster. So I'm going to start with the, the saw logo. I have saved every single typography that uh, we need for our, uh, for our poster. Save it from 1001 font as a PNG. I'm going to just uh, uh, do one. Uh, so open it, control A to select uh, everything, control C to copy it, control L to paste it in your original canvas. Use the form tool and increase the size, position it, and you're ready to go. I'm going to do the same thing for every other typography in our poster. I won't do the time one because I'm going to use a slightly different technique. So, But every other typography here, for the most part, will be just uh, images from a 1001 font. So... Uh, Sit back and enjoy. Okay, so far so good. I did manage to add most of the typography in. Now I'm gonna start doing the 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 date of our uh, film festival. I think it's a very creative way uh, how it's uh, sketched. I'm gonna use the line tool, which is under the pen tool. So you need to click the the arrow, 
you will be able to access the line tool. I adjusted the weight to 35. That's the weight that I'm, uh, I want to use. I'm going to hold shift to draw a straight line. This is a vector graphic. That means you're going to get a vector layer here. You need to rasterize it to change it to a pixel layer. Rasterized, all done. Just going to call it dash. For the other one, we've got multiple options. So uh, I can use uh, the shape tool and draw a shape for my uh, for my date. Again, this will be a vector mask. We need to rasterize the vector mask. Then you're gonna merge the mask. You get that shape. Now you need to rasterize your layer so so far so good now that you have done all of that you can start deleting the inner section of it so i'm going to select it hit delete we will get just the border that we want right, i'm going to duplicate this because i want the other box to be exactly the same size isn't it? rather than just uh, trying to guess it i'm going to just duplicate it Hold shift, go to the move tool, use the arrow keys and move it to the right hand side. With this one, however, oops, too much. We need to have it completely filled in. I'm going to have the same similar gap here and here. Right. All we need to do now, fill this in. So if I use the paint bucket, it's black. Let's see if that works. Yep, that's fine. Right. So far, so good. Let's hide our sketch for a bit. And uh, I know I haven't named a lot of my layers. I will do that uh, after I do this. I'm going to do my text tool. Click and drag. I think the font that I found was, yes, Digital 7. Digital 7 is an amazing font for doing any, any digit. So... I still time new Roman. I'm gonna change it back. So it was. Uh, I completely forgot what it was actually. <laughs> eleven three eighteen. Right. Eleven three eighteen. Uh, let me double check it. Right. She's got a instead of a colon. She's got. Uh, A line in between the dates. Well, that's fine. Uh, let's uh, change it to digital seven anyway. So right now, that's changed to digital seven. Amazing font. Uh, let's uh, increase the size. I'm going to start adding uh, space in between those now. One space and one space and one space. I think that looks slightly better right so far so good I probably want to reduce that yeah I won't be able to get it perfect uh, unless I have uh, multiple layers I think that will do I will duplicate this layer I'm going to move it to the other side select everything and I'm going to change it to white right I know it's going to be three days film festival so it must be 13 uh, let's just check it yeah 13 change it to three Right, so far so good. Right, what I want to do now, I'm going to add, actually she did have the column in between, so I'm going to add those column back in, one space, one space. And it's quite difficult to get this qu quite right. 
Yeah, that has to do. Yep, that's fine. Uh, 11.3.18. 11.3.18. Oh, 13.3.18. Right. Awesome. I believe she did have it. Uh, a red font for this one. Uh, quite dark red. I changed in the wrong area. I quite like that. Right. Perfect. So far, so good. Awesome. I'm going to use uh, an aerial font for the caution graphic content uh, warning, which is, I really like that, that uh, this is added to the poster. So I'm going to type that up using just the aerial font, uh, probably uh, something simple. I don't think we need any more display fonts in our uh, film festival poster. And after that, I'm going to uh, name all of our layers as well. I think we can add, uh, it's missing something, so we can add uh, a bit of a grunge texture overall and uh, perhaps a, a vignette to our poster. So uh, let's go to the top layer. I'm going to go file open and uh, I have a couple of uh, grunge texture here. I'm going to hold control, select both of them. I'm going to click open. Uh, let's uh, quickly close some of the stuff. Close no. one more so we get everything on the same line. Right, I got this one and this one. Potentially, this one will work. So, control A to select everything, control C to copy it, go back, control L to paste it. I'm going to uh, hold control or shift rather and rotate it in position. I'm going to hold shift again to proportionally increase the size. It fit perfect for an A3, which is uh, which is great. Uh, I'm going to mess around with the blending options now. I think uh, down will work, dark will work. Uh, I might actually uh, leave it as normal and place it all the way down instead of changing blending option. That might be a better solution. I think that looks much, much better. This, uh, it looks good. Uh, I didn't want to add too much color to this. I think uh, uh, it might take it away uh, from the poster. However, if we want to add anything, uh, maybe possibly have saw or film or festival even uh, be a different color. So to do that, you can use uh, different options to color a PNG image. So this is our festival. Uh, what we want to do, we want to hold control and select the entirety of our layer. This is the quickest way, by the way. Create a new layer, call it a festival uh, color. 
and I'm gonna add the same red that we did for the text. I'm gonna select fill. That will fill it with our uh, with the color that we selected. Every other number could be uh, could be changed to red. Uh, I think if we do live, for instance, uh, and dye both of them. Let's have a look. For this one, I'm not going to make a new layer. I'm just going to... It's good practice to create a new layer. However, I'm just going to hold control, select everything. Uh, possibly do saw as well. Uh, if I can find it, we have so many layers, but we did name it, so it should be okay. This one. Right, we do have a lot of selection here, so I need to do one at a time. Right, I might be missing stuff. Yes, I am. One, two, a few more, and we are almost done. Right, in terms of uh, numbers, uh, let's start with one being black, uh, two red. I'm actually changed the one to red as well. I want to do it based on uh, where they are. So we've got red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black. Red, black, red. Perfect. Uh, in terms of the last one, I don't think that one should be uh, that color. So I'm going to change that. We've got too much red. Right. Perfect. Final adjustments. Uh, this one, uh, our puppet. I think he is... Uh, I think if you remember we adjusted the levels or the contrast I think it's too much I want to bring it back up now I need to look at it from uh, from the back really I think that's better I think that is uh, much better I can go back before or after that one is much much better if I want to make the background a bit darker I can use curves no I think it's, uh, it's too much Ever so slightly changed it, made it slightly darker. Click OK. Right. Let's show you the whole thing. Excellent. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We did uh, discuss the quite a different uh, sets of technique for creating a film festival poster for your R zero eighty five and. Uh, we managed to keep it uh, to the original sketch, which I think is the is key. I think it's quite important to keep it to the original design. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's uh, uh, you can uh, take some technique from this that will be useful for creating your own original poster. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share the video and. Uh, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.